Hello and welcome to Chinny Vision, a brand new YouTube channel where we're going to be looking at everything from the ZX81 through to the Sega Dreamcast and everything in between home computers, consoles, games, hardware and wherever possible when we're showing the games we're going to be using the original hardware with video capture. No emulation unless we can absolutely help it. So where do we begin? Well, here. Chronos is a 1987 game from Mastertronic, retailed at $1.99 um, from the authors of the game Agent X. Got kind of middling reviews at the time. Um, but it does have this amazing Tim Follins soundtrack, which doesn't play when the game's actually playing. It only plays on a kind of blank screen with text. But I I've dubbed it in the background here just so you can hear it. Basically, the thing that strikes you, first of all, is it it's quite like Nemesis or Gradius. You're kind of scrolling along, shooting in a ship that looks like sim similar to the one you have in Gradius. But there's no power-ups. All you got is your laser. No speed-ups. Nothing. And the attack waves of the enemies are fairly basic. They kind of appear right to left. Some of them in later levels bounce around a bit. But there's, there's nothing really complex here. You do have some tighter spots where you've got to go through caverns and things. Sometimes the game can be a little bit unfair because things appear... And your ship, the trouble is the ship doesn't move fast enough, so it almost becomes a test of memory at times. There are five different levels, and you see we're going into level two now. The colours change. Um, you see some different baddies on the screen there, but other than that, and a slightly increasing difficulty level, that's it for pretty much 20 minutes of gameplay. Brought the Amstrad version on screen here, so you can see that side by side. A few more colours on screen as you expect, expect with the CPC, but even though I've got them running side by side there, as you can see, the, it's a bit slower. To be expected, of course, the Amstrad's got to shift around 16k of memory per frame, which the Spectrum doesn't, so it's always going to be a little bit slower. But other than that, it's, it's the same game. You do get these little kind of greetings in the graphics that you see that go past from time to time. Um, which is quite endearing. Other than that, as, as you can see, it's pretty monotonous as you kind of grind your way through the levels. I'm playing here on the Amstrad version with a bit of a cheat, just so I can get through to the end of the game. Um, and here's another one of those kind of big uh, messages that you see goes past. It is enjoyable. It's, it's uh, $1.99. Um, I think the magazines originally were a bit harsh on it. Um, it's not bad. But it really needs some power-ups. It really needs some more movement to the enemies and better attack waves. There's no end of level baddies, but there is one at the end. And you can fairly defeat it fairly easily to release Kronos at the end. Not really a big challenge at the end of the game. And to be honest, you're not likely to get there without cheating either. But all in all, not a bad game for 199 Better than much of the Mastertronic fare, if I'm honest. Not much to choose between the Spectrum and Amstrad versions. The CPC version's got a bit more colour, but it's a bit slower. Um, and it doesn't have that music either. The Spectrum has that amazing Tim Follin music, which, to be honest, you can load that up and just listen to it, because that guy is making the ZX beeper do things it shouldn't be able to do. Um, it, it is amazing. Um, fantastic music. So, Kronos, yeah, worth checking out. You're not going to get more than 15 minutes of enjoyment out of it, but, you know, not bad really. 